Okay, so you should know at this point in time that you can solve any equation using graphing. You really can. You can solve any equation by graphing. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is just like we did with polynomial functions, we're going to make sure that these equations are equal to zero. We're going to graph them and we're going to look for where they cross the x-axis. So for this first example here, uh, we need to subtract 42 from both sides. Now, that's not going to change anything that's on the left side. It's just going to stick a minus 42 there on the end. Once we get it equal to 0 there, we're going to go to our calculator, go to our y equals, type it in exactly how it looks on our paper. 3 parentheses, 2 to the x, close the parentheses, minus 42, and then we are going to press graph. And we're looking for where this equals 0, so where it crosses the x-axis. Typically, we're only going to have one solution for these equations, so we need to find that 0. Second trace, it looks, uh, 0 is option number 2. It looks like it's between 3 and 4 here, so here's something you can do. When it asks for your left bound, instead of moving your cursor, you can actually type the number 3 and press enter. And then it will ask for the right bound, you can type the number 4 and press enter. And notice that that 0 is between those two arrows there, and press enter. And it will tell you exactly where the 0 is. So that means... X is approximately 3.807. Okay, now, um, chances are on the multiple choice part of the, or, well, the entire test is multiple choice, but as a multiple choice answer choice, that's not going to be in decimal form. It's going to be in logarithmic form, so you'll have to be able to compare uh, the answer choices compare their decimal values, but we'll get to that when we talk about logarithms. Right now, you just need to be able to find uh, the zero. Okay, let's look at example B. We've got e to the x plus 5 is equal to 60. So again, we want to make sure that that's equal to zero, so I'm going to subtract the 60. Now this time, I actually can combine some like terms, so we can make that e to the x minus 55. We're looking for where that equals 0. Positive 5 minus 60 is negative 55. So go to your y equals. Make sure you know where e to the x is. Second, the button beside <coughs> number 4. Put your x in. Make sure you close your parentheses after the x. Because the x is the only thing in the exponent. Minus 55. Press enter. Graph. And it's got a very similar trace there. I can't really tell exactly. It looks like it's at 4. But if I look at my table, it's not at exactly 4. It's somewhere between 4 and 5. Because at 4, I've got a negative value. At 5, I have a positive value. So second trace, 0. You can use your cursor. You can do the number thing. Whatever makes more sense to you. Um, but it's like 4.0 4 okay, 4.007, so just a little bit more than 4, but not exactly 4. Don't write down 4 as your answer on your paper. You've got to have a little bit of a decimal value there. Okay, example C. We've got 2 times 3 to the 2t minus 5 minus 4 is equal to 11. We need to move that 11. So we've got 2 times 3 to the 2t minus 5 minus 15. You need to do that in your calculator. That's fine. And technically, when you type it into your y equals, uh, another thing there are multiple things in the exponent there, so it's got to go in parentheses and then close your parentheses around the uh, 3 raised to that power. Um, if you want to, technically you can do minus 4 minus 11. Okay? You don't have to actually simplify that. Uh, your calculator will handle it fine. 
Okay, so make sure you get parentheses in the right spot. You've got to have parentheses around the 2t minus 5 or 2x minus 5. Put parentheses around that. And then put parentheses where the problem had parentheses. And then graph. Okay, uh, it's between 3 and 4. Second trace. 0 is option number 2. Left bound is 3. Right bound is 4. This answer is approximately 3.417. Okay, so pretty straightforward. You just got to know to get these equal to zero. Know how to type them into your calculator and know how to find the zero once you do that. So you've got a couple of problems there for practice. I want you to find those answers. Um, and then we'll move on from there.